Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you guys are. I hope you're having a fantastic day. It's Soul Saint here, and we got an action-packed news week ahead of us. So I wanted to go ahead and start off with two things that we're going to be talking about. We have an upcoming fusion that we're going to be discussing, as well as the new Prism event that is hitting the pool for us. And I wanted to just do a quick breakdown on this so that we can have it out there for you guys, for those that are interested in my output. And then from there, we'll go ahead and break down the... Uh, the look at our next upcoming champion that's going to be interesting for us to see, okay? So, Warrior S Summoning Pool. I think this is a very, very interesting one considering we just got Xena uh, 10X is just now occurring. For those that are not aware, uh, there are a select uh, amount of dates. You can take a look at my breakdown of Xena and her kit, as well as, you know, the dates that we're going to have 10Xs for, which is including today as of the time of this recording. So, um... Are, are we going to have, like, a bunch of them all together in one pocket? Basically, all the warriors of the, uh, warrior S's, excuse me, of the, of, of, of Teleria? I think that's going to be kind of interesting. So, let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at this. We have, uh, a couple of good ones, actually. I'm actually kind of excited. So, this is my first time looking at it, and Harama, automatically a W. Elva, to me, is automatically a W. Uh, depending on how your perspective is on, on our current terrain of Clash, uh, Trunda could be pretty good. You know, Hydra Clash. Um, Jetney, not so much... Kyoku could be interesting, and Valkyrie's really good. So, honestly, this is a pretty interesting champion pool, and it looks like it's at the cost of 30 Prison Crystals compared to more expensive ones from before. So, very, very, uh, very, very accommodating in terms of the price uh, of per, per prison, prison Crystal. But I will say, if you guys have noticed, we have a 4.5% chance of landing a Legendary and a 95.5% chance of landing an Epic. So, I guess the mindset should be that majority of your pulls are going to be Epics, first and foremost, and then... Based off of this, you have a couple chances to get a couple of these select uh, legendaries. So, for me and where I'm at in my account, I am definitely a lot more driven and focused towards like the the more later end content, such as PvP focused uh, content or Hydra focused content. And there are a couple of champions that stand out pretty well when it comes to doing this kind of content. Uh, for one, I definitely think Harma is one of the meta, if not the meta defensive nuker of the game right now. Currently, you know, her kid is very explosive. Uh, has really good scaling and pretty much is uh, anti-meta in a sense to demon spawn, which is very prevalent. You have your duchesses out there, Hefrat, Kandra, fun to name a few, right? So, or, or Helicat for that matter, you know, when he's partnered with UDK. So, like, there's a lot of really good champions that she counters to, as well as being a, 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 a force to be reckoned with herself. So, very, very valuable champion in that regard, right? Uh, at best, I'm not really too sure on, uh, to be honest with you, I feel like, uh, might be okay in certain scenarios, but I think for the most part, having an AoE de uh, decreased defense is nice, uh, with a little bit of a packing of punch, uh, A3, I think the, uh, extra damage is proportional to, yeah, it's proportional to a champion's attack or the target's defense or attack stat, whichever is the highest. Um, and then, of course, we're removing one random debuff, uh, or, yeah, one random debuff from this champion and placing on the target is pretty cool as in terms of, like, being able to, uh, redirect in a sense, right? Um, okay, I don't think there's anything like too standout-ish, but if you're looking for something in Sacred Order for Faction Wars or maybe just in general like you need a, a stronger, more potent, uh, decreased defense champion, that could be very valuable for you, you know, that's something, uh, something noteworthy. Now, I've actually had the pleasure to work on a couple of accounts in my takeovers, uh, and amongst them has been some champions like Elva, and Elva is a monster. Underrated, in my opinion, uh, legendary support champion, if not one of the best champions from the Seven Watchers, and you can quote me on that, believe it or not. Uh, continuous heal A1, two turns on the lowest H, uh, on the lowest ally with the, basically the ally with the lowest HP, excuse me, I'm over here, can't read. Um, really, really strong heal. Uh, block buzz, increased speed with a cleanse that comes with it. Very valuable. And then a revive. It's a single target. It's the only thing that's a little bit, you know, a little unfortunate about her abilities, but even then it still brings a lot with it. So giving you increased defense and increased attack so that you can kind of either sustain or get back into the fight with packing a punch. So not too bad there. Um, healing each ally by 10% of their maximum HP at the start of their turn, uh, with a perfect veil on the target with the lowest HP at the end of this champion's turn is really, really valuable, and her being a speed league gives her a lot of viability. Whether you're looking at options for clan boss, she has some tunes where she could fit into, such as, like, Myth Air, she could be the cleanser and the increased speed champion for that type of team as a variation, same thing for Mifu, like, those type of compositions where you need block debuffs or increased speed or both, and a, you know, uh, debuff removal she does all of that right so it's very very valuable uh in terms of like pvp support very very valuable champion that's able to revive keep the team going cleansing them giving them some speed giving them some mitigation in terms of like veiling some that veiling believe it or not when partnered with champions like udk or maybe even a, a duchess for example that we're talked about it is so obnoxious it is so it is so dangerously annoying to deal with and then like depending on the type of champions you're using you know if you're you know, spirit heavy like I am when it comes to my nukers, this this champion is a problem because she automatically has an advantage over you from being magic, you know? So, very underrated in my opinion. Beautiful design. I love the helmet 
or I think what would be considered like the helmet or her hair or something like that. This is this is such a cool design. It gives me like Dragoon vibes from other games and whatnot. So very, very cool champion. I think um, very dope in the aspect of what this kit provides. I think this is an underrated champion. So definitely a W in terms of if you're looking for better supports to get the ball rolling. Trunda. Trunda, Trunda, Trunda. This is a, cr uh, a tumultuous, a troublemaker, for the lack of better words. Um, although in PvP, I feel like she has been power crept in terms of like damage output or potential. She's still a menace, you know, someone to watch out for. High base HP means that she automatically has a little bit of inherent tankiness to herself, comparatively to other attack type nukers. Uh, but the real essence and the real problem that she's been a troublemaker in has been Hydra Clash. You know, you know, there's a lot of cheese comps that she's able to do a lot of damage based off of the fact the way her skills are, are handled. You know, you're doing amplified damage to a weak affinity target head, and then the splash damage of that is supposed to be only 60% of that damage inflicted, but it's magnified to a point where you're basically one-shotting one shot, one heads in the normal hard, and I think I've even seen some, some compositions do well at the Brutal, depending if your gear and, and your, you know, your composition is designed well enough, right? That partnered with, like, Yumiko's or Resetters, for lack of better words makes her a problem a very very strong problem and then of course her a3 is a pretty strong aoe uh chance to stun and, and hp burn on top of that very very formidable champion in terms of being able to provide a lot of damage in in hydra and some people think it's broken i don't know if there's any official like statements about like uh on like you know this is as designed or, or whatever the case may be but this is one of those scenarios where like you it, it's it's comparable uh to like your corporal and cadaver or your new the recently arised uh madman compositions that are a little bit more on the broken side and it seemed like they weren't intended to be designed this way and yet we were able to exploit it uh as players and that's something that that's kind of a draw for concern right so trenda is one of those ones that right now is like in a tumultuous relationship for right players however uh with them putting them out like this i feel like maybe there could be an argument that uh trenda could see some changes or adjustments i know we are on the way uh, ever so closely to the new year, which is going to be bringing some uh, character rebalances. Maybe her rebalance will be still strong enough to keep her relevant in the game, but also addressing a concern that we have when it comes to Hydro Clash. Who knows? We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. But I think she's a strong champion, a pretty solid, uh, uh, you know, magic nuker, for lack of better words. Jetney, a fusion champion that nobody really was excited for comparatively compared to other champions that were either her partner or just different altogether. She is supposed to be a nuker that does a lot of debuffs and a, poly a polymorph meta kind of makes her a little bit of a problem. Uh, but at worst, she could be a glorified uh, decreased defense champion, which could be good. You know, a replacement to war. I think it's War Maiden, I believe it is, the way her name is. Uh, the rare that you can get in campaign. She's an upgraded version to that. Basically, the big sister. Um, also has a really good partner in Alsgore who is good for block deep, uh, block damage, uh, composition. So like think about, uh, your tower, your, uh, your helicap comps. He also is like a viable alternative, right? But with them together, he also, she's able to do a little bit of, uh, placing debuffs and it's irresistible if he's on the team. And then of course stuns as well as increased crit damage and crit rate to the team as well as doing a little bit of damage on top of that. Pretty cool. Pretty cool champion. Um, I do think that, like, in order for her kit to shine, she's conditional upon having Alsgore in the comp, and that's two com uh, that's two places, two champion slots that are being consumed just to make this champion re relevant. So that whole word about conditional makes her a little bit lower on the stature. So also, I, I believe her multipliers are they're okay. They're okay. I don't think they're anything too standoutish to make her like super superior or super relevant in today's climate for PvP. But for for areas like uh, PvE content, she could be pretty pretty strong. So. Kyoku, on the other hand, is a really, really cool champion. I love her aesthetic just in general. She was one of the first Shadowkin legendaries, I believe, that was in the game. Um, her ally protection is phenomenal because she also gets blocked damage, so that means that she's pooling some of the damage while not taking some of the damage, you know what I mean? And on top of that, being able to be mitigative or providing a little bit of additional uh, utility damage in terms of HP burn and decreased attack is very, very valuable. And then the weekend, you know, being able to place a weekend uh, on an A1 hit is really, really good, you know, getting more damage out. Now, the value of her is that she's actually an upgraded version to Seeker's uh, passive where you get the increased defense because she's also healing and a whole bunch of other factors that make her very, very, very relevant. Complemented with an increased aura. She's a very good uh, protection type oriented champ that could do well in like go second comps for PvP. Um, maybe not the most sought after, the most immediate answer. Like the, the, she's not like the top of the spectrum when it comes to that type of protection, go second style strategy. But she is a noteworthy nod towards, and I think that's something to to remember for a lot of players. And that, and on top of that, she can actually pack a little bit of a punch if you build her in a way that's a little bit more uh, offensively oriented. So I think that could be a 
uh, interesting dynamic to bring to the table. But overall, a really good support champion. There was some, when she first came out, some really, really unorthodox, but yet they were efficient teams that went the more traditional route. But they also enabled players to be able to go the distance in like clan boss meta and whatnot. And although that's a little bit more of a dated, uh, dated content for people to participate in, if you're one of those type of players that are progressing, you know, maybe you're early game, maybe you're mid game, and you're still trying to find your way into Ultra Nightmare, this champion could give you some some viability with that ally protect and the block damage on top of that. So keep that in mind whenever you're looking at this champion pool, right? Now, Valkyrie is a very, very interesting champion. I just did a takeover on her, and I built a Goseka style team that is kind of eluded as a Goseka style team, but it's an anti, it's an anti go first team type strategy because of her passive. Uh, basically, whenever a ch an enemy gets uh, their turn meter increased or a buff placed on them, it decreases it, and she basically is able to inject herself and the team into the fight a little bit better, right? That, along with a fat shield, probably the best shield in the game that scales off her defense, and she's one of the better champions for defensive scaling, as well as a counterattack makes her a very, very formidable champion. Not insurmountable, but definitely a champion that's like you got to watch out for. You have, to, you have to make sure you're aware of the dynamic you're fighting into, right? So, uh, a very, very valuable champion. I will say this one, uh, Fire Knight Hard first came out. She was one of the, the go-to champions for... She was the Fire Knight Hard meta, and it's still viable in that scenario, par partner with like champions like Cardiel. So, if you're looking to get into hard content and you want to find a champion that can give you a little bit more room for, for you know, danger, you can got, kind of get into it. So, that's going to be kind of exciting. And then, of course, Lissandra, your go speedy... Uh, counterpart to the go second matter she's trying to get everybody ahead go fast give increased speed turn meter boosting turn meter reduction siphoning off of turn meters uh, of an enemy target uh increased speed in all battles by 24 percent for an aura very very fast you know trying to get ahead of everybody type character so very very good viable in go first strategies for arena viable in speed areas where you need to be faster than maybe the boss for example dark fey uh which i did a video on if you want to take a look at that you're more than welcome to really really strong right now, here's the kicker when it comes to the summoning pool, and I'm not going to go down all, all the list of all like the, the, the epics that are in the pool, but I will give a special nod that if you pay attention clo uh, closely here, one, not two, not three, but at least four champions within the summoning pool, and you see me hovering over them right here, this little uh, you know, L-shaped Tetris tile, if you want to call it there, uh, they're all champions that are viable towards your Lady Makage, you know, if you've been slowly making diligence towards it, uh, I believe the other three that I mentioned besides Elisinia is in the Tatsu region, which I already fused up, so, uh, you can find her... You can find a, maybe a little bit closer progression towards that if you were to get those champions. So there's an uh, easy nod there. Dilesia and some of the others are worth a nod too, though, because they're relevant in their areas of focus. Allure, Fire Knight Normal if you're still progressing there. Uh, Lady Annabelle, who is a champion that could see some viability in some specific Doom Tower bosses, uh, where she is the meta, the go-to solo champion for it. And then there's some other quick nods, like Aina's not a bad... Uh, DPS champion that you can use to like maybe clan boss or even in the barbarians faction wars. There's a lot of really really good champions, right? Um, how do I view this uh, summoning pool? I'd say just for the sole factor that there's top end meta like Harama champions in this pool It's automatically kind of a W especially with the price pool being only 30 prism shards. I like this. I like this. It's not bad uh, It would feel bad though if you're pulling a lot of crystals and you don't get the Champion you desired amongst these like, you know, if you're getting nothing but epics that could be a little disheartening so as always this is a uh RNG element that we have to be aware of and I want you to make sure you do diligence to always be reasonable with your expectations But if you're looking to specifically get these champions There's a, a very good argument that prison events are pretty, you know Spot on for focusing and tunneling into getting a specific champion, you know May the odds be ever in your favor kind of deal, right? You know and as well as like Elva Trunda and some other ones that could open the door for a lot of other content I do view this as a very big W now I will say that the other side of this which can be kind of annoying is how they offer their packs and whatnot so far in my experience since I've been watching the Prism Crystals, this area has been the more lucrative. Whereas, like the packs you get inside the the shop, uh, out, external from the Prism event section, where you may see a couple of like offers that get thrown out there, they've been less than desirable in terms of value, and they're almost a scam comparatively to what you can get literally from just clicking over here and clicking the summoner pool and getting the crystal. So I hope that they introduce a element of like packs if the, if you are going to be one of those type of people that spends that is justifiable and desirable for lack of better words that makes you want to you know buy some crystal some crystals and maybe take a chance at one of these champions but let me know what you guys think do you think that this uh warrior s summoning pool is a w or is it an l also let me know how you guys feel about xena uh so far there's been a lot of like back and forth about the the views on the past not even so much the champion herself 
Uh, do you like it? Do you not like it? I'm curious to see what your perspective is. And also, we now have it up for 10x. Now, word to the word to the wise here, or the caution here, is if you are not aware, this champion, if you get a duplicate of her, cannot be fused into herself. The only fusible empowerment champion that you can use to get her is King Scar uh, Elder Scar, excuse me. Uh, who is a part of the Barbarian tribe. So if you have an Elder Scar and you're not using him and you want to empower a Xena, you can. But having two Xenas does not mean you have a plus one Xena. It means that you have two Xenas and that's it. So just keep that in mind if you're going for the champion pass and you're thinking about pulling for the uh, for the champion through the 10x summoning event. So just be aware, okay? Now, with that being said, we are at the moment of focus to Ugir the Worm Eater. We're going to flip the script here and talk about our next fusion that's coming out. Um, this is a legendary HP Ogre, and I'm going to tell you from a glance, and we're going to take a look at how he looks overall, uh, right off the rip. I think that this champion is very, very fun looking, but in more in particular, I think this champion kind of looks, uh, very reminiscent to stuff that's like World of Warcraft themed or whatever, you know, based on that game. It has elements or designs that look very similar or comparable to this. I look like, I, I really do feel like I'm dealing with an Ogryn in a sense, which is really, really cool in terms of design. I love the staff slash scythe or or spear axe, whatever you want to call that. And then the, he's got that shoulder pauldron that looks like a dragon or a rhino. Very, very cool looking. We're going to go ahead and do a one more turnaround look at him and just to see what he looks like. But really, really cool design, in, in my opinion. And once again, the devs for Rage Out Legends, when it comes to the, the art design or the concept design of what, the, what these champions look like, is undefeated. I mean, some of the best looking champions I've ever seen developed in any of the games. They're really, really good. You know, amongst the best, amongst the best. And I gotta admit, it's really, really cool to see. Now, is this champion gonna be worth going for you? Well, let's take a look at what he's got for a kit, and, and you'll help you decide from here. I believe my understanding is that this champion is going to be a fragment champion. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, it is a champion fragment. I just double-checked here. Um, so keep in mind that the way that the... the, the fusions are going to go it's a little bit easier for fragments comparatively to your traditional and also comparatively to your hybrid style fusion so this is one of the more easier style approaches okay let's hope he's worth the investment though okay so let's see worm wrath uh or is it worm worm i'm not sure how we say that uh attacks one enemy has an 80 percent chance of stealing a random buff from the enemy also has an 80 percent chance of placing a block buffs debuff on the enemy for two turns so that's pretty good um, attacks all enemies. This is A2, Earth Puncture. It's on a four-turn cooldown, but can be booked down to a three-turn cooldown. Has an attack all enemies. Has a 75% chance, can be buffed to 100% chance, of removing all buffs from all enemies. And then has a 75% chance, can be booked to 100% chance, of placing a 25% weakened debuff for two turns. So, removing all buffs from an A, uh, A2 ability on a three-turn cooldown. So, it looks like we're getting a lot of buff strip or anti-buff meta champions. Um, and then it also places a weaken on the enemies as well. So that's an interesting dynamic. Um, I find that buff removal is a very interesting concept in this game that has given me some value in terms of like arena focus. And that's what it seems like we're driving this champion towards. It seems like he's very arena oriented. So Ogryn Fortitude. Uh, it's on a five turn cooldown. Can be booked down to a, not a four, but a three turn cooldown. Places an increased accuracy buff on all, ice for t all allies for two turns. Okay. Places an increased defense buff on all enemies, all allies whose defense is higher than or equal to their attack for two turns. So really good for uh, defensive nukers if we're trying to bo boost them up, uh, up as well. But if you have higher attack, so for your attack nukers, place an increased attack buff on them for two turns. So this kind of automatically starts to sound like more of a support utility type champion. So that's very interesting, you know. A buffer and then a buff remover. Very good. Very good. Two and one. Uh, Scourge of Dragons, which is a passive, has a two-turn cooldown, so this is interesting. Whenever an enemy is revived, instantly activates Earth Puncture, the A2. So, whenever an enemy is revived, it automatically activates the A2. If an enemy is revived by a champion from the Lizardman faction, the effects of Earth Puncture cannot be resisted. So, you don't need to worry about, uh, accuracy if you are, um, having an enemy such as, like, Pytheon, who revives the team... Uh, which is very prominent in arena in some capacity, whether that's classic live. You see him, you see Pytheon laced throughout the throughout the game. Uh, so automatically a counter to Pytheon, which is interesting. Uh, this passive effect will only activate when an enemy is revived using an active skill. So it can't be a passive revive on death or something around those lines. Instantly activating Earth Puncture will not place the skill on cooldown. So you could do it and then do it again when it's your turn. So that's interesting. If there are multiple champions on the team with this skill, only one will activate. So if you have multiple Ugears or Ugire, I'm not sure how we're going to do it. The Worm Eater. Um, only one of those is going to activate. So that's interesting. It's on a two-turn cooldown, but it can be activated on a one-turn cooldown when it's fully booked. And then, of course, he has an aura, where it, which increases ally accuracy in all battles by 70. Not the highest, but pretty, pretty solid. 
what are my thoughts so far? As an HP champion, this screams utility. Um, I won't deny that the way that we were introduced to this champion, their words from from what the information we got from is literally anti-revive, which is not to be confused with champions that are like uh, Lydia, for example, who is like a response to revive. So, you know, it's not a block revive or a re deny revive. It's more so like it's a responsive, a response to revive. So... If a champion is getting revived, it procs Earth Puncture, which basically removes buffs and places weakened. So it puts a handicap on the champion that got revived. That's basically what I'm interpreting this champion to be. Now, of course, we don't have any multipliers to justify whether or not this champion is going to be strong as a damage outlet. He is an HP champion, so if you go HP nuke route, maybe there's some potential there. Uh, my cause for concern starts with every single ability uh, that does damage uh has a debuff associated to it and we are proposed or, or we are subjected right now currently to the meta of polymorph which is very present right now right and i will say this for for the record there's been plenty of talks amongst other content creators as well as announcements that have been given from previous interviews if you think about ash and surreal i believe her name is uh they talked about polymorph getting adjusted so it seems like we're getting champions that are designed with the mindset that polymorph is going to get addressed Hopefully sooner rather than later. You know, we're all about uh, efficiency and time frames and frequency of updates. But as always, we want to see uh, new champions that get that get birthed into this game. We want to make sure that they have a viable opportunity to, to, to thrive, right? And Polymorph, when it comes to a lot of debuffing and, and whatnot, has a big interruption to that to that strategy so I, I do believe that they're conscious and aware of it and hopefully that that time frame where we get adjusted and have a much more polished environment to operate these type of champions and it's going to be very high and and nice so i do think also just to say this too having a buff stripper who also provides a debuff that allows your damage output to expand is nice so i do like the a2 and the fact that it can proc off of a revived champion from the list that, that was revived from lizards uh or the lizard man faction is really nice um, it is an answer to at least one champion, but I don't know if I would necessarily scream that this is going to be a high-end champion for the purposes of it being very conditional to only Lizard. If it was to every single reviver in the game, then I would say that this would be a lot more relevant, maybe even overpowered, so that maybe that's the reason why they didn't do it, but only Lizards, to me, seems like you're only responding to Pytheon, so maybe a counter matchup that could be a viable uh, option to consider right so like i will take that for what it is but if you're looking for uh consistency and various uh uh various diverse options of like champion pools and whatnot you may see this less likely because who how many people are still consistently relying about pytheon and that would be the question that you'll answer based off of your experiences in the game are you seeing a lot of pythons if yes then this guy's you know stonks go up to the moon if not maybe a little bit less viable in terms of his responsive passive but still valuable from having an a3 that can remove and debuff a champion and buff you know a buffer on top of that so very very unique kit uh, i love the way he's designed i'm actually curious to see if he's going to be uh, a powerhouse in today's uh, terrain and time will tell and that's a, that's the way i want to do it. i want to warn everybody too as well as as much as possible try not to get caught too uh, too quickly into premature speculation or speculation in that sense uh we want to make sure that players give enough time to a champion to see how they do i think we need to get multiplier information we need to get like a, a, a very in-depth understanding of this champion before we make an assumption about whether this champion is bad or not i do think that there are some conditional factors but i do think that there is a, a chance for potential on this champion and i want to see what other players bring to the table with it so with that being said let me know are you going to go for this fragment fusion or not i'm very curious don't forget to like comment subscribe and let me know what you guys think i'm actually curious to hear if you're gonna if you're gonna opt in or you're gonna opt out i know we got a lot of big events that are coming down the road and I'm hoping that we can get uh, uh, a good roadmap of the things to come. I do think that there's going to be some more information coming along the way about new content. So I'm excited for that too as well. And when that does come, you, we'll see, I'll be one of the first to try to break it down for you guys so you can see it. And as always, always remember guys, stay ascended.